What's up guys? We forgot to film an intro today, so this will be the intro to the video. We're going to Sand Space Museum out at Port Canaveral. We hope you guys enjoy. So here we are inside the Sands Space Museum. It's just one room. It's a very, very small museum. But there is so much history in this one room. Now here at the museum, they have LC for launch control. And it's basically every single launch pad out there. They have a little... Uh, basically like memory board fact board about it Could you imagine being crammed in there and coming down from outer space and landing in the ocean? Out on LC 5 and 6 this is where they actually launch the chimpanzees in the space That is awesome They got ham the chimp And that's him all in his little capsule. Now the nice guy here, one of the volunteers, Kevin, was telling us earlier that um, one of the chimpanzees was in his case with the space and back and they rewarded him for every time they hit the correct switch. But unfortunately for one of the chimpanzees on one of the missions, they miswired all of his buttons. So he was hitting all the right buttons and getting a small electric shock, telling him, no, you're wrong, when he knew he was right. So when he got back to Earth, <laughs> he was mad and he tried to fight all the astronauts and humans trying to get him out of his rocket. <laughs> Here is a piece of a Juno rocket that was launched on July 16th, 1959, but exploded. There's the model of it. And then just above it, they actually have pictures of the explosion. Which all happened out here at Kennedy Space Center. This is um, a track of the launch of a vehicle called Juno 2 in the summer of 1959. This is a, a very well-known picture for those collector of rocket pictures. This was really spectacular almost from the get-go. We see the vehicle lifting off and um, essentially coming over immediately and being destroyed by um, range safety. So this is cool here too. They have the entire burst stage of an Atlas rocket. That is cool. And he was explaining to us earlier as well that the water that they spray when a rocket launches is not to actually put the fire out or keep the fire contained but it actually suppresses the sound waves. He says if you're close enough, if the fire doesn't kill you, the sound waves will, which is really cool. So here, GE built this, General Electric, but it is a heat cone, and it is Teflon. The same thing we use to fry our eggs in stops things from burning up coming in from the atmosphere. Here is the second stage to the same rocket that is right over there. This is probably my favorite thing in here. This is a actual Gemini console. The entire console is here. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. And they say they have a bunch more. So they just got it fixed. Like... Yep. That's what it looked like before they had it... Um, Restored. Restored, that's the word. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. I wanted to say remodeled. Oh, well, that too. Remodeled. Yeah, but yeah, when they had it, this is what it looked like before it was restored. And then, now. Yeah. So yeah, right here is a Jupiter. The PGM-19 Jupiter re-entry vehicle. Yeah, it's basically the nose cone. Just look how massive this thing is next to Krista. And then behind Krista, you can actually see inside of it. It's just wires, but still. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Here's just another cone they have. This one goes all the way up into the ceiling. But yeah, they have a lot of stuff. They have another testing for like a heat shield testing he was telling us about for this one. There's so much in here. There's LC 31 and 32. You know what they would launch from it. And then there's launch control pad 34, which was home to the Saturn missions. So back over here at 31 and 32, he just told us about this. There is two underground silos out there that have been filled in. But one of the most amazing things about those is this right here. They actually have pieces of the Challenger that were recovered are buried inside of those silos. And that's what it looks like above ground. It doesn't look like much, but yes. I'm gonna take a photo of that. That is amazing. They have models of the Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket. And the cool thing, I didn't know this until today, but there's actually two rockets. There is the early version with the Dragon capsule. And now there's the newer version. And up at the top, that's where all the satellites would go when they launch the satellites now. And then there, if you look at the bottom on the mirror there, you can see there's actually two different engine configurations. On the original rocket, it was nine rockets, three side by side, up and down. And then on the new one, it is eight rockets with one main rocket in the middle. Then right next to that, they actually have the active launch pads, which are 40 and 41. But yeah, it's pretty cool because both active launch pads, 629 tomorrow morning, we get a rocket launch from that one. And then at 7.08 p.m., we have a launch from that one. Two launches, one day. And then last but not least, before we head out of here for the day, they have the actual launching contraption for what they called the DART, which is this rocket right here. All right, guys, well, we hope you enjoyed your video today. There's a group button right on the other side of the camera. A group walked by, yelled something that was funny. Yeah. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed your video today, guys. We're right outside the SpaceX launch control. Now, this isn't an active building anymore. They actually built a new one on base that they're using. But yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed the Sand Space Museum. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. Bye.